So when did you realize you had so much to offer? <laughs> <laughs> it was the early age of you one. <laughs> I was a twinkle in my father's eye. <laughs> There we go, yeah! Welcome to season two of Iman Amongst Men. The show that takes an honest look at what it is to be a man in today's world. We don't shy away from topics most people are too afraid to talk about. We gonna take it all the way there. It's season two, y'all. Let's get it. All right, y'all, welcome to another episode of Iman Amongst Men, brought to you by Uninterrupted. I am your host, Iman Shumper, here with my big head ass brother, Ari Shumper. Go on, give a what's up to the people. Dog. What's going on, y'all? I'm Ari, and today we get joined by one of the most talented and innovative MCs in the music world today. Give it up for Bay Area's own. Oh, hey, man, bring it up. Woo! Woo, yeah. The theme of today's episode is free game. Mm. When you hear free game, aside from you know your breaks, when you do free game, um, when you hear free game, like what comes to mind? Priceless information. Mm. Mm. Does it always have to be like um, what? Like what type of information are you like most? married to as far as like what you want to push out into the world like what do you really want to accomplish with free game like is it to get is it to shape the young man's mind is it to talk to all young kids is it to talk to grown ass motherfuckers that ain't figured the shit out yet like everybody it's just to share experience you feel me i feel like that's the the greatest teacher people want to learn from the people who did it no one want to just learn from the nigga who just talking about it and never right. accomplished it. Right. Like, I want to know from the person who actually did it. That's one of the things I always ask when we go into like any meeting or a label or whatever. We like, what did y'all do? And mm. a lot of people can't tell you what they did. Right, they right, do a right, lot. right, right, <laughs> right. You feel up. me? So for me, it's just sharing experience of things that we've done. Yeah, you seen that shit, a lot of shit that you... Uh, Entertainment, period. You yeah. see that all the time. The breakdowns of shit that you've put out and posted and yeah. you know, just mm -hmm. the transparency of everything. Um, you know, the from the numbers to, like you said, what you had to do, like you were saying earlier, driving the damn Sprinter because you ain't right. trust nobody <laughs> with your life. That's some wild shit. Uh, talk about um, ownership <laughs> and uh, transparency and being in this industry? Uh, necessary. Both is necessary. Ownership is necessary because, uh, man, you ain't going to have nothing to, um, in life, it's a roller coaster and it go high and low. And if you don't own nothing, when it get low, it's a lot rougher. Mm. <laughs> Real talk. It get a lot tougher when you ain't got nothing. And Real everything talk. that you had was uh, somebody else's that you just was able to borrow and collect off of versus actually having it. And transparency is important, especially in this industry, because uh, for 50, 60, 70 years, artists have been experiencing the same type of abuse and the same type of mistreatment. And we never get nowhere. Like, it's still able to happen today because no one will say what happened exactly or they won't share exactly. Like, people say they have a bad deal, but they won't show you it. Mm -hmm. And there's some deals where the labels make it hard for you to show it. They make sure you can't. I got an offer from somebody before, and before I got the offer, the nigga called me and was like, hey, this just between us. If you need anything. And it just had me thinking, like, any nigga who call you first and say that before they send you <laughs> anything. Talk. It's some right. shit going it's on. It's like, what you prepping me for? <laughs> <laughs> what you prepping yeah, me for? What are you prepping me for? Right? You're trying to prepare me for something. Grooming him for the. Grooming. Uh, yeah, you feel the me? okie doke. Real so talk. transparency is just necessary because people don't. We don't, we don't get to see what happened to make people stars or what they had to experience to get to a certain level, which makes it uh, sometimes feel unobtainable. You feel me? Or even just that lack of knowledge to know, like, nah, they not supposed to do that to yeah, you. Yeah, That's yeah. not right. Real you feel talk. me? But a lot of people, a lot of people be ashamed, too, to even say, like, they took a loss or had a bad deal or had a show that just didn't pan out, you know, as they thought mm -hmm. they would. Like, people have uh, too much pride to even share it. So we just kind of. I was going to say, that's what I way. would, I <coughs> wouldn't be showing niggas. Yeah, like I felt like, like there's a formula happened. to 
success where you if you don't even show or highlight any negative part that constant you know push of success on the people it's just easier for people to go with positive and right successful but you feel like do you feel like that's hiding um you see what i'm saying like, like if somebody I just like chooses to portray like if you don't it's like yeah it was a concert and maybe not that many people came but it was just one lit person that you <coughs> brought on like the it's stage it's inauthentic <laughs> right mm-hmm. like you're you're filtering and choosing um how you want to display your journey which is okay but for me it's like i want to show everything just because uh I never want to get to a point where it feels like I was faking it because you didn't see this or somebody mm. could call you out. Like I remember with the uh, with the baby that came out and was like, "Oh, he's selling two for one tickets yeah, and they yeah, doing this." And it's that. like that's not nothing to be ashamed of. That's something to stand on. Yeah, we didn't fill it out. Five hundred people came instead of seven hundred, so we gave half of them off. Now seven hundred people came. That's yeah, how you yeah. make it work sometimes. You feel me? But being that people don't like standing on those moments because they pride. It just makes it look, mm. you feel me? It makes everybody feel it look like, like a letdown. Yeah, and it's like it's not. That's a win. How many of y'all niggas could get five hundred people in this building? You feel me? That's a, that's a win still. But we look at it as negatives, but it's not a negative, right? <laughs> like right. that's that's yeah. not a negative at all. You it's feel just me? Not as many as it normally would be, right? But it's more than zero. Real talk. You feel me? <laughs> Real talk. He bringing in a right, yeah. exactly. But Real you looking at it in a really positive light too. It's like a lot of artists, I'm sure, will get you know discouraged. But he's saying anything. Oh no, I know. But I'm just win. saying there there are always still natural expectations. Mm-hmm. You know, like especially in like you know like the baby's case where it's like I'm sure he was expecting way more, way more, and I'm sure he wasn't expecting to have to do that. Like, but Russell's to the point where it's like, yo, it's almost like any business is good business here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like he's not weeding out the people who came for free versus the people who paid to get in. Yeah. Do you feel like when you do that, you make yourself a little too accessible? Um. What would you define as as too accessible? The ticket sales for somebody that kick it way more humbly, and way more like the people can touch me, like nobody will pay that top dollar to come see them man uh yeah not for me because i have people who pay thousands for tickets and then i have people who pay a dollar you know um i'm i'm big on like if you're not a la russell fan you might not want to pay 30 40 dollars to experience me but you'll be willing to pay five to figure out what it's like and then once you find out you're gonna pay top dollar so i just want to make sure everybody has a chance to experience it first Cause I know after that? you experience it, you gone. Mm. But how do you monitor that? We built a tech, so uh, I, I'm partnered with a guy named Ibrima. We have our own ticketing platform called What's TBA so. that does offer based ticketing. So I'm able to to run my entire offer based side through the technology. That's fire. Yeah, some Damn, new shit. That's fire. How did you how did you stumble onto that? Um, I've been doing proud to pay shit for a couple years now, and mm-hmm. I started. We started at the door. There used to be no way to buy tickets. You just got to pull up, pay whatever you want. Mm-hmm. But uh, I noticed like we get lower sales because if you really fuck with me, even if you at the door and it's a line of a hundred people behind you, you're not trying to pull out two hundred, three hundred dollars. You feel me? Uh. So we went from that, and we started doing offer base for my backyard, and we was doing it all manually through a spreadsheet. You can make an offer. We choose if we accept or decline. And then we finally, I end up meeting Ibrima, and we built a technology to support it. So now mm. it's like, it's the wave, and people could do it in a finite way. That's what I was saying. So yeah. And it's fair. Near, like, you could damn near be at a seat out. Right? And and that's the beautiful thing, because you don't know what you're worth to someone else. Like, we do uh, music and, like, all these interviews. Like, some people's lives have been changed. So to them, it's worth a lot more than the person who's like, I want to see what he's about, Right. And those people take care of me. Mm, that's what I was saying. That's it's almost like a membership thing. Yeah. So I do have a membership too. I got an article. <laughs> I love it, dog. Speaking of such. <laughs> While we're on the topic, get your shit up. I have right. an artist membership called a gold card. That's and basically, wrong. if you get a gold card, you pay a, a, a one time fee, like you make an offer for it. And if you get a gold card, you can come to any La Russell show or good company show for free for the rest of your life. So, in five years, when I'm doing an arena, those people can come for free. They don't even have to pay that price. They come to the backyard. Like, I, I got recurring fans. Like, my shows, people travel for and just come back to back because they have the ability to. 
Right. And then you also get added to a stock list, so you'll get random splits on songs, percentages, and revenues. So, like, there's a what? bunch of people who got, like, there's over 50, 60 people who got a percent in Baggage Claim, 10s, 20s, songs like that that are, like, their favorite joints, Cisco, you feel me? Um, and then you get, like, discounts on merch. It's just, like, a dope club to be yeah, a part of. Bro. <laughs> Why are you giving back so much? Why are you making me seem like I just don't give a fuck about fans? <laughs> like, I ain't got no hey good man. shit. Do better. Yeah, do better. You know, I just know I ain't got no gold card for y'all and shit, you know? dog. I ain't got that, bro. Right, you ain't got no app. My bad. I ain't know that was like the standard. <laughs> Help him, bro. The industry Help standard him. was this high. No, that's why Lil Russell here. He's here to. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, you got my mind. It's still. definitely not the industry standard. Right, it's definitely <laughs> not. It's definitely but not. But that's raw, though. How many shows do you think you do a year? I don't even know. Last yeah. year, I probably did. I like. 30 40 i'm not even i'm not even big on like doing show like i don't be moving around hella and doing show we get a lot of offers and i turn a lot down because i'm like i like to be at home and mm-hmm. i got a venue in my backyard now so it's like that's really what i'm cultivating so if it doesn't really like make sense i just don't be doing it and that also builds demand because people know i'm not everywhere you're not gonna see me everywhere if you want to see me the easiest way is to come to my house you feel right. me so it's um yeah, I don't even do a lot of shows a year, and it's probably going to decrease as I grow the amount of shows that I do. That don't scare you? What you mean? Doing shows at your crib. Nah. Why? Nigga, I'm from there. I live there my whole life. There's more people who love me than hate me. Uh, he lives his life the right way. And, uh, Can't make all and, the enemies. You and and uh, my address is Googleable, just like everybody else's. It's not like it's a surprise. But it's an invite with a, a bunch of people now where shit can go left, and now you got to cipher through a thousand <coughs> it people. It depends on what type of energy you cultivate, right? It's not like anybody can just come, right? Anybody who makes an offer to come to my backyard, if you pay 200 150 300 to come see a show, gonna you don't want no problem. You want to nah, enjoy your fucking exactly. day. <laughs> nah, <laughs> you nah, want to nah, enjoy feel, your I time feel. there. You He's on to something. Real talk, though. He's on to something. Because they yeah. You get to filter shit. things out. Like, our public, our public shows, like, you could pay whatever, a dollar, but the backyard is like, you have to make an offer that yeah. makes sense because it's like, my family is here. My pops is cooking. The kids are outside and in a jumper. Like, we're not just doing a dollar to come here. So the people who do pay to come there, they really want to be there. They're not coming uh, there for no issues. Damn, so the kids just be kicking it at the Yeah, point. we get jumpers outside and the kids be outside partying, chilling, That's doing their thing. Oh, it's it's like a little, it's a backyard cookout. Y'all got to pull up to one this year. It's just a backyard cookout, man. I'll pull up. That's what I'm yeah. Pops, get the grill ready, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. bro, that's what I said. Shit, I might take the tough critics. Game. I ain't gonna lie. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bro, I might have you come do one, do a show in my backyard. Bro. Yeah. I'll perform, Co- and man, then like, after that, I'll take it from there. So that's actually what we did. We did an announcement last year to uh, get a bunch of different people who fuck with us backyards. Like we got everybody to send in pictures mm-hmm. of their backyard and the oh, ones who dope. are willing. Cause like we're, uh, we're gonna do a very untraditional tour where it's like, nah, we hitting backyards. Just a ticket, so the niggas who are comfortable with it and want to do something dope, we we gonna be doing that. That's what I was here. Yeah, I like that. Use your backyard. I got a pretty cool one. Yeah, you got a big backyard. Pretty cool one, not gonna lie. Yeah. Yeah, talk your shit. Go ahead. Tell them about your backyard. It's man. just cool. Right, man. That's like how I feel about mine, man. We renovated cool ours last hell, year yeah. for the shows oh, and now it's okay, just so like, man, it's a out. cool it feel you you never uh I know I'm getting older because I appreciate having a, a nice backyard. You mm-hmm. know, it's like that simple thing to me, it was like life changing, but it also brings a lot more like peace. Like it feels good to be back there and to know we took that shit from dirt. You feel me? Like it's it's so much behind it. Yeah, you yeah. built it. That's right? what I was saying. Yeah. Not a lot of people stay grounded like that. That's what I was saying. How do you uh approach like picking somewhere outside of a house, like a venue, a restaurant? Uh, yeah, if you were to perform outside your house. Um, being that we have our own ticketing, now we have to approach it differently because a lot of venues got ticketing contracts with like uh mm-hmm. Live Nation or, you mm-hmm. know, Ticket Web, Ticketmaster. So it'll be a workaround. Right. So now it's it's a little workaround. So we really it's beautiful though now because we really find the indies and the guys who are like, I love what you're doing, I'm willing to do something new and fresh, right? So um yeah, you basically finding really, more of the really fans that you want. Right, we really gotta dig a little bit more, but 
it's doper. It's a grander experience. The people there is always different and fresh, and they want to be there. It's nothing worse than performing somewhere where a nigga feel like they doing you a favor. You know, man, instead like you of bring like, your own sound guy. We bring man. We bring everything. <laughs> How much does it cost to move for you to bring a show somewhere? So like that shit I just posted that last show that last run to do Portland and Seattle cost me sixteen thousand. So depending on where we running and if I'm doing a bigger show, smaller show, if I got my keyboard, it's my team. It could cost me anywhere between five to twenty five, depending on the type of show that we're trying to do. Right. My uh, I did a show out here in L.A. at the Fonda, like twelve hundred tickets. We took a bus and I brought the pergola to put on stage, set design, all that shit, a whole team. So, yeah, it could range anywhere from, like, 5 to 25, which is, like, I'd be having to break it down when people come with offers because niggas come with offers, mm-hmm. like, man, I can give you this. And it's like, bro, it's not that I want to disrespect your offer. It's just like, bro, I'm putting on a real show, and I'm bringing real people who really contribute and help. Like, you got to – it's worth something. You feel me? I'm not a nigga you could just pay $1,000 to come to. I just can't do it. It mm-hmm. wouldn't make sense for me. It's not going to make sense for my team. It doesn't make sense for Plus, us. Plus, he a do-it-yourself guy. Like, clearly, all of what he just explained really mean, a.k.a. he want to do it all himself. Real talk. Like, he like, fuck that. I want my own sound Yeah, guy. man, if your, man, trust y'all if your show goes sideways, I'd rather be the one accountable for it. Like, we've had shows where we did it and sound went out or some Just shit happened, and then it's like, you just feel away because you like it wasn't even a, it wasn't even in my control and y'all fuck like you know it builds a different relationship. So as much as as much that we can have in mm-hmm. in house, I prefer it. Right. No, shout out to that. Where does uh, you know, the good company and all the all the stuff that you're doing? How does it go against the grain of the industry? How it does. The independent man, I honestly feel like it doesn't go against it unless people don't want change, right? The only time my my infrastructure and my ethics goes against the industry is if y'all like fucking people over and y'all don't want to do better, right? Because but it's not really. I wouldn't say fucking people over. I'm just saying there's usually this outline that people need a bigger engine behind them. They, they need do somebody in place to do this, somebody in place to do that. And it seems like you just do everything in house and go direct to fans. <laughs> yeah, and that's something we had to contemplate a lot early on. Like, man, do we need an engine? Still to this day, we have those conversations. Like, do we need the engine? But we look next to us to our peers that are on labels and stuff, and it's like, well, we've had you know more success in a shorter amount of time. We're on all the same platforms. We get the calls. We get the same festival offers. So we just—it's really the machine you need, not necessarily the label. It's just for so long the label has been the machine for everyone because a lot of people give up before they get to this point Mm -hmm. or just don't want to do all the work it takes to get here. So it's easier to just go to the person who has the machine, right? right? But the thing is, when you use their machine, you got to use it on their terms. I'm someone, um, I don't want to have to give away my whole car just to get a good engine. You feel me? I'd rather find someone who could build an engine and shit so I can keep my car. Because if something happens and now it's like you got to walk right, everywhere because right. you didn't even have your car. You gave everything to him just so you can get to a certain point. How you going to get home? <laughs> you walk stuck now. When the niggas up. decide we won't arch you stuck. We gone. Okay. Real talk. Pick it up and be gone. Again, do it yourself. Like he just don't even, he if don't even want to deal with real, nobody though. else's shit. I mean, that's yeah, why like I'm building half the shit. I do a lot of the same shit where I'm just, I'm buying my own cameras. Did you I assemble, am. like, your whole team yourself? Yeah. My whole team was, like, like I don't have any industry professionals or experts in the field on my team. It, it was all my homies that I'm, like, I I was literally doing everything, like, mm-hmm. every task. And then I start showing and teaching people different tasks so they could take it on. My audio engineer is someone I taught how to audio engineer, you know. So it's, like, every task, I was editing all the clips and filming everything mm-hmm. and I just had homies around me, so it's like, bro, help me, and I'm going right. to give you a percent of this, I'm going to give you a percent of this, and eventually the team started expanding, and we started getting people who have uh, just different specialties or better in a certain field, so, but yeah, we How we long this training kind of with the Russell take? It's fast, because if you don't get it fast, I just move on to like the Christ. next person. So it's I was going really to ask right. him, like, are you a good teacher? Clearly. I think I'm an exceptional teacher. Either get teacher. it or get out. <laughs> I think I'm an exceptional teacher, but certain teachers are for certain students, right? True, true. I'm not, um, 
That's a teacher's answer. But yeah, <laughs> not every and, and and you know that like as you come up and you grow up in school, like yeah. you could tell which students is excelling a bit more and which ones need a little bit more help, and you need to be able to separate that. You feel me? I'm trying to build an all star team, so I don't have the time to like cultivate you for six <laughs> years. It's like, nah, I need this done today because we about to blow. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that training don't so last you hope long it, with me. You hope it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You hope it. You pushing them to something great. Like you want them to be a butterfly immediately. They can't sit in the cocoon for nah. too long. Um, like that's insane. Well, the thing is, like, like nah, we get insane. to we he get to build. We he, get to build together. We get to become butterflies together. <laughs> but on that journey, it's like. I'm someone like, man, I used to work in aerospace, and I went in there with zero knowledge of their system, their infrastructure, anything, but I watched everybody. Mm. I, when I ask a question, I'm looking at everything, I'm going to learn it, then I'm going to do it. If you had 10 chances to do something and you only got it right once, I, I don't really need, I'm not going to sit here and wait. Your average is really low, True. you feel yeah. me? I'm going to just go to the person who got it 7 out of 10. You ain't got to be perfect, but it's like, you, you can tell certain type of people. And if you want to go far, you have to get certain type of people in that car with you. So you judging you judging motherfuckers immediately? Uh, based oh. on their performance. Yeah. <laughs> so he's lost some friends. Oh, <laughs> he's no, lost and that's, that's the beautiful no. thing, though. Like, I don't, I don't lose friends from that aspect of it ever nah. because everyone understand like we could be homies but this is my dream i've been building this since i was a kid this nah, is separate I'm the same way. you feel i'm me? the same way even yeah. though i'm yeah, laughing you still my shit. dog niggas still pull yeah, up and hang I'm up, but it's like shit. nah we don't need you on that right, side right right right, right 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 yeah. you be my homie for free yeah. yeah you could be my dog forever <laughs> you good where you at <laughs> you good where you at stay over there <laughs> how'd you uh end up working at uh aerospace uh, through a temp agency. I was just young and going through like oh, the motions man. of finding jobs and I ended up there and I started on a production floor and I ended up learning hella shit and I got to move up and get to like the administrative side and learn like contracts and the network and shit like that. So you've been, you've been, numbers. Yeah. you've been doing that where you just soaking everything up behind the scenes. Man, since a, since a youngin, you know me, my pops used to take plotted. me on the road like with them, and I just was a sponge. I got to see everything. I got to see how business run. I got to learn how to communicate. I've always just soaked everything. You know what's crazy? Our father uh, started his own business, and I never cared for what he did. It was just his regimen. Like I didn't get involved with what he actually had to do as an insurance broker, but what he had to do as a as a man and like what he had to do as far as times and meetings mm-hmm. and how he tried to present himself and why he tried to present himself that way, uh, what he was paying attention, why he cared, what watch somebody was wearing, like little shit like that. I'm just like, why do you care about that? I never right? knew how to do the job. That's like, some salesman I just wanted shit. To, yeah. And that's the thing you pick up specific things that I remember um it was a year the Warriors had, had went when they had Baron Davis Stevens at the We Believe mm-hmm. squad, right? My pops had uh a homie who worked at the stadium. So we had hella we had hella tees, right? They end up losing, but we had hella tees like during that moment. What do you mean tees? Like boxes of T shirts of the We Believe oh, okay, tees, okay. right? So um boxes, boxes of them. So I remember one day I was going to school and I put some in my backpack and I'm like, I'm finna sell them at school. I start yeah. talking about it to people at school, start selling them. I, I stole them and start selling them. I mm-hmm. didn't even tell them. But literally, probably about a week after, like, because they ended up losing, he was like, it's t-shirts in there. You want to go sell them to your friends? Whatever. And I was like, for sure. He didn't even know I was already selling them <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> But it's like that that energy that I like early. I was on it early. The hustle is dead. I was the same way. I used to sell. I used to sell CDs. I used to burn CDs to people. I was bootlegging all y'all shit. Y'all know that. Yeah. Committing hey, piracy. Oh, bro. Yeah, but Lime that was wire, but you at might, a grand larceny level. Bear share. You might uh, be the reason mix. a lot of niggas blew up, bro. That was marketing, like, bro. If there was no no piracy, yeah. Tyler Perry and Kevin Hart and a lot of these niggas' careers wouldn't be what it is without right. it. That Real marketing talk. was pivotal. We had the whole hood on Medea, like, because of bootlegs. Like, imagine real, how many right. people you would have missed an entire market. Straight up, because so we wasn't going to buy that shit. you didn't, you didn't get the paper shit. for it, but you got the exposure. Right, right. Somebody might have watched a bootleg, and now they're going to the actual show. 
Damn, so y'all welcome. Now that I'm sitting here apologizing. Yeah, man. You yeah, y'all better be y'all thinking. Y'all welcome. <laughs> <Yeah>. Nah, Jay Z <laughs> never still sitting there. I put so many people on. Yeah, Lupe, I, yeah. dog, we was giving oh, so yeah. many. Nah, I gave I even sold Lupe, I was giving so many people them, that first and 15th, dog. Man, Jesus Christ. I was yeah. just. They if you left you. a couple, of, yeah, you got 80 minutes on each CD. If you left a little bit open for me, I got jiggy for you, man. I, I let you know what it is. Right. DJ Mon, like, it was crazy. Y'all Speaking was, of that, like, burning CDs and all that other shit, <coughs> what type of music did you grow up listening to, and what was your favorite uh, favorite artist growing up? Man, I, I was listening to everything. So my pops was, like, the DVD CD man. <laughs> like, the, like at the point coat. where, like, you know, there was, like, niggas who sold DVDs who was in Walmart parking lot. And then there was the mm. niggas who were like in the mall in the better places. And then there was the niggas you'd never seen because they had like it on lock. You feel me? Like he was that nigga. You so mean? I really like got to see. He had niggas working for him. He had yeah. niggas on the corner working yeah. for him. That's yeah. crazy. And he could probably got the best. Like <laughs> got that made the best and copies. That's the thing. My pops always been like, if he gonna do it, he gonna do it. The, his shit looked like Walmart sold it. That nigga put it in a case, had a cover art printed every like. Yep. He was the yep. best. Yep. You yep. feel me? So, so he was damn near just giving it to the other competition. He just giving them the best. Yeah, he giving yeah. them the best. And then he had his own clientele that was direct. You feel me? So it was just, I got to really see an empire be built at the highest level. You feel me? Like that <laughs> nigga was empire. Netflix Boot before level. Netflix. Yeah, you right. Basically, me? basically, he's a streamer yeah. service. Damn, that's crazy. But we knew tons of people like that. It's crazy how you think about shit like that. Like, well, you know, he was that was he was. But the, I'm saying in comparison, he was kind of the plug at that point. Straight up, but I'm saying in comparison, like he he looking at it from, you know, that's yeah. all the streaming services is doing. Like, you know what I mean? And that's how he he attacking it. I ain't never thought about it like that. That's what a that's what I was. I was just a streaming service. That's exactly what you were. You see what I'm saying? I've box. been. Way to justify that, gentlemen. Apple Music. Way to justify your crime. Oh, Apple Music. Fresh but you feel me? The streaming services are a derivative of piracy. Like, that's that is literally true. what it is. Yeah, that is true. How much is they getting? They robbing. They oh, yeah. It's damn near $20. Robin it's going to be $20 a month soon. Robin on uh, Apple, at least. So, yeah, Robin I already Hood. see why you, <laughs> why you do what you do. Uh, what about uh, some of your favorite artists? Um, Wayne, okay. Ross, mm. Ye, Ho, Pac, Cole, Andre 3000, mm. Lauren Hill, Erica Badu, um, Kendrick, of course, Drake. Um, those were like my mains coming up that I was like playing heavy. Mm. Um, I remember getting Rick Ross shit from my pops. Like we used to go to Rasputin every Tuesday, so you get like all the new Wait, stuff. Wait, what's that? It's a music store. Like they sell CDs and records. Damn, y'all ain't have a Rasputin's. So we used to have this record had, store. Uh, we used to go. What's our music store? Coconut. <laughs> the industry used to release that on might Tuesdays. Be too old so every we used to go every Tuesday, and like that was just a dope ass experience being able to pick your own music mm-hmm. and what was what was hot. Damn. Yeah, we didn't have nothing like that. Yeah, coconut. And we, we had other record stores. Like I'm we just had saying, a that's the one we like was that. hitting. We was at Coconut. Tower Records. Yeah, we Tower. had one of those. But, but yeah. Coconuts, that's old. Yeah. Like, you don't, you don't <laughs> know. Nigga, I got Ludacris dead. back for the first time at Coconut, man. That was my first <laughs> unedited CD. I was like, wow. There were a lot you of first things. Yeah. Yeah, Plus, like they didn't they. check IDs or nothing, so you could buy. They was letting us rock. Grand Theft Auto and shit. <laughs> we was buying that in like right. sixth grade and they shit. They were right. just like, yeah, fuck it. How did being uh, from Bay Area shape your music? Uh, man, completely. All of my influence got that bounce and that bump from the Bay. Mm. And it also just influences the grind. When there's a, when you grow up anywhere where there's no infrastructure, your grind got to be different for people to even know you exist. Right, like we don't have no labels, no TV, mm-hmm. no media, no news, no nothing. You feel me? So, yeah. like, it really just impacted the grind, and I think that's what got me here. It's like some people don't even love the music; they just love the grind. Or, what the uh, you you ever heard people from Detroit speak? Like they music talk, talk and yeah. music. Do y'all feel the way about it? Nah, it don't sound similar to y'all. Um. Is it Not just my ri- outside I think, ear? I think it only sounds similar from the outside. So y'all think y'all sound different? We definitely sound different. Yeah, they do. I don't sound like Sada Baby, <laughs> but I love the way that nigga sound. 
you feel me? But we we actually from there, and that's like any that's like anything like see, I'm from I'm from Cali. Actually, we're actually from there, I'm as from, if they are not. <laughs> I mean, like they not. So you're the correct sound, is what you. That's what I'm saying. I'm no, not trying to I'm start the sound. <laughs> I'm the sound just for the <laughs> bay. I'm saying I'm actually from the bay, so I could distinguish the oh, difference. Okay, okay, but I think you. from outside, it's like coming from Cali. When I be moving around, mm-hmm. a lot of niggas from the south sound the same to me. No matter what region they from, mm. they all sound very similar. There's a few places ah, that sound different, where it's like, oh no, that's New Orleans. Oh no, that's yeah, that. Yeah, but for mean. the most part, <laughs> when you coming from Cali and you go to the South, them niggas like, all oh, sound country. alike. But they really don't sound alike yeah. when you're from there. You feel me? And they like, nah. Copy, maybe yeah, yeah that, that's we all know. it is. I we be, definitely don't sound alike. Every person I meet from Detroit, like I'll meet somebody and I'll be like, you from like when they got that type of style accent, I'll be like. You from Detroit? And they be like, "No, I'm from the Bay." Like, like don't do me like that. That's like, nah, I'm funny. from the Bay. And then every time I'm supposed to guess, oh, does that happen all the some, time? I, for me, I'm always incorrect. Like I always well, say this person is the opposite. Saying, does it happen so all the time? Yeah, I, I, I think guess I happens. think it's the yeah. It's definitely because you like a third party looking. Jesus in, so Christ. It all, you feel me? It all, it all kind of looking. Pr- I mean, it's probably crazy. like that. He really just be talking his regular shit. Like he really deliver deliver his regular message. But I be thinking he play with me. <laughs> He's like, no, you no, just no, a no. you just a third party yeah, ass cause nigga. You, yeah, because you. Oh, no, he is. <laughs> I know, but that's what I'm saying. That's what I thought he nah, was he's going. No, he just saying from the outside looking in. Like he, you really don't. And we from the Midwest, uh, so it's like we get a mix of all of that. Like yeah. I'm sure that's not a huge mix of Southern people from Atlanta, or from you know. Yeah, it is. No, I'm saying out where he is. In the Bay? In the oh, Bay, nah. Yeah. Yeah. Where we are, it's tons of people everywhere. What do you feel like um, was the biggest reason for how you evolve as an artist? Shit, I don't even know. I think that's like a, that's one of those things that I actively kind of think about and search for, and I've never been able to find the answer. Which is why I'm able to keep going. Keep right? doing. This is a first. It's just in there. This is a first. <coughs> what? Where somebody was like, "No, I don't know yet." Oh yeah, yeah. Or I'm, you know, I don't really have a plan. I'm still thinking about yeah, it. No, you're saying you saying that's know, where the albums no, are coming from. We respect it. In you, we respect it. And you don't know why you do certain things, and you, it's just in you, and you, you don't really have a logic or reasoning behind mm-hmm. it. It's just like, I was just put on this path. <laughs> What's up? I, I'm that way with basketball. Like I. I I'd rather not start with it. Like when I, like if I'm if I'm somewhere and there's a, a rim, let's just not start shooting around. Because once I start shooting around, <laughs> right. it's like whatever I just had to do, just gone. Just, yeah, just right. hold off for a little bit because I'm we late now. Right. Like, Till I'm tired, I just want to now. I got to do it. Like, so anytime you late somewhere, but I'm just why. saying like right. it's that's one why. of them things though that is like you try you think you leave like you know how many times me and Jr got kicked out the gym like just kicked out because it's like or me and Kai we getting kicked out for just playing one on one over and over because it's like bro this is never gonna be over you win I win like no we not we not going out on that that's a bullshit shot we right. not we not going out on that and they be like dog what are we going out on dog <laughs> we gotta play tomorrow we're like, just not that's yeah the really cold tub not. can't fix everything my dog like if you play all night you just ain't gonna have shit for tomorrow like but it's like that that game is addictive and that's right. what he's saying chasing that that answer is like nigga, i'm gonna have a whole nother album trying to decipher through why the fuck am i doing this like what is do making you look me at, do you look at your rap career and like your business uh you know your business upbringing and all of that as one or do you like look at them as two different uh entities yeah i look at it as a life i don't really have a rap career or a business career right yeah. i just have a life and, and through my life i do a bunch of these different things they're all branches off one mm-hmm. tree you i love that you do that though and you yeah. make it seem like it's very chill i thought that would bring like anxiety to a motherfucker like man yeah i I chose to do it that, but then I looked up and it was a thousand motherfuckers yeah, really at my crib, me. and yeah, I was like, me. you know what? No. That, for me, for me, that's a backdrop. Like when he was like, man, like I don't really trust people to do shit like that. I'm like that too, but at the same time, I know I'll get so stressed at certain points, especially if it's at my crib and no, see, my like name me, on the line and shit like that. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I'm the type of nigga to buy the. I'll buy the crib like up the block and then perform at the other like the up the block crib. See, and, that, and just because I'll be like, I even though I'll be like, man, I ain't bringing that type of energy. It's like, what about the energy that just 
it ain't got nothing to do with you. It's just a motherfucker driving through the neighborhood and you can't, he like, man, you but can't, he's speaking from I, experience. I, yes, I live, you have to deal with that. Yeah, and that, and that could always happen, but if I live with that fear, I won't make history. You feel me? Like, I made history I through the backyard. I love that. And imagine backyard if, I, if I chose not to do it because it's like, yeah, one nigga might get out of line and do something crazy. Then this whole has anybody ever got that life, ass beat? life that changed. yeah has anything y'all like had that? Dave Chappelle Chappelle we haven't niggas. had to, and it's been beautiful because we had a few moments at shows where like niggas is irrational, but I always just stop the show and I talk. <laughs> That's to a it great way to prove it. Niggas yeah, is irrational. Yeah, you have a conversation and it's like, bro, you feel honestly me? And, no, I and wouldn't really ruin his cookout. You don't want to be the guy who ruins that too because there's, there's hundreds of niggas in here who love me. Yeah. Like that's gonna be the worst ass me never. But it's like it's always just a conversation, and we've been able to settle so many just little nah, little man, moments. You gotta be proud of that then. Yeah. Your daddy had never looked over at you like, man, get this. Sh- like, man, these people. That be, Bob, who, that be watching. Who it yeah, off. No, yeah, yeah, like, that be who be watching. Like, yeah. it off Bob be watching, but man, the 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 audience is so beautiful. Like the people. The people take care of a lot of shit before I even have to. That's raw. Because they really respect the space. That's raw. All right, I feel safe. I was nervous to get my ass whipped. Yeah, throw you in the pool. I was nervous, huh? They gonna throw you in the pool. Well, I could swim. Just don't get my phone wet. Oh, yeah. no, the phones is. <laughs> yeah, the phones Just don't is get done. the phones wet, my nigga. I really don't care. I could swim. Everybody else will probably <laughs> jump in afterwards. Uh, describe your creative process. Uh, writing. Uh, recording, producing. Man, I I have the simplest process in recording. I usually I'm with a producer and they play a beat. I pace back and forth for like ten minutes. I go record the song and it's done. It's all like one little quick thing. Word. Dead ass. Every song you've heard from me. You from all me. two track. Just one take. And if I choose to do an ad lib, but everything. No, no, no. I'm saying two tracks as far as uh. Like just the MP3, you don't like build yeah, beats I'd be, and shit. Nah, nah. Sometimes I'll give it to producers and they like, but saying. I'll write while they're doing that. So by the time they're done, I'm. Oh done yeah, I'm saying what. Yeah, so yeah, no but waste yeah, it's time. very. It's it's a real simple process for me. I hear it and we gone. Most Is that something too. learned or that's just? That's just what's always worked for me. I guess as I as I grew and got better, it's just like. Yeah, it just became the process. Not yeah. even like. What does that mean though? Like, as a, you can speak to that too. Like, as a lyricist or a rapper, what does that mean when you're like, "Yo, I'm getting better"? Because that that can mean anything, depending on you people, know what. People what? are your gauge. Like, you're yeah. not getting better until everybody that start hearing you play the song is like, what, "What's that?" Like, what? Is, you know what I'm saying? Because to me, music is connectivity and communication. <laughs> Like, mm-hmm. if you can't get an army of motherfuckers to say that shit, it really ain't the term. Like, it really ain't the phrase. You know what it I'm saying? It ain't it yet. Yeah, it ain't it, ain't and it yet. you'll start understanding that connectivity when you start the first song, first shit you say on the song. Nigga be, what's that? Like, and beyond, you know, you beyond, uh, or I just think the, the song, the beat. Motherfucker hear that shit and just be like, you start knowing, like, I'm getting better. My beat right. selection getting mm-hmm. better. Right. And I and I think I think the people is like a product of like the work. You mm-hmm. feel me? Like all the best athletes, they not the best because the people love them, but the people love them because they are the best. You mm-hmm. feel me? Like after you work so much, it's like people loving your shit is a byproduct of you just making great shit. You feel me? Real Naturally, talk. so that's yeah, that's how you know you're getting better because more people embrace it. Real talk, but they're always the gauge. Like articles and all that shit that shit is all right <laughs> hit or miss with the fabrication <coughs> it could all be bought yeah, exactly. right and that's the thing like mm. the people the people can't really be bought if a nigga don't want to see you live he's not coming you can't pay him to come real talk <laughs> real talk that's when was your when was your uh your first big show um of my own of your own probably yeah. fonda last year december okay. in la that was 1200 but I've done like a shoreline and Greek theater, mm-hmm. like a couple thousand, just like as an opener and, and, and feature artist. But my own show, I think Fonda was our biggest so far. No, nah, we did San Francisco. We did the Midway. We did uh, okay. around the same amount, like 15, 1600. Damn. Man, he probably did numbers too. He didn't have to pay nobody. No, nah, but I'm just saying, sale. like, just, just the idea that it's, uh, you know, we, we, we do get, we, we harp on this, this design that you, the only way to move forward is to be doing bigger name shit and doing this and doing that. And you, 
uh, it's almost like adopting that currency formula where currency yeah. is just like yeah. I'm gonna drop an album about what I'm really doing. He like I can't. He like when the last like he he sat up here and was like when the last time you heard a verse where I ain't telling you that I woke up, smoked, got in my car, went and got some gas, got some chips from the. Bro, and that's gas the station and went home. Thing. He like that's my verse, mm-hmm. right? When mm-hmm. you could make your life into just like sauce, like it comes so easy. Like for people be asking how we write so fast, and it's like I don't have to make shit up. It's that's very easy yeah. to just say what I did today uh, or yeah. what I experienced. That's a very easy thing Real to talk. get to. I can remember that. Me? Easy. <laughs> I remember that. It's it's here. So right? It's easier to remember. Also, oh, you're not the nigga writing stuff on. You know, like thinking of stuff on the fly and then writing it down real quick. You just all day long go in mean? one take. Like you're not just thinking of no, stuff. No, I write it you, first. Uh, but I'm saying you don't think of stuff like on the go. Like when you're it's time like to write, you write. throughout your regular write. day. But like, throughout your regular like day. Like me, he's talking about like me, I, like we sitting here, I'm going to write two, three lines. Uh, they going to be talking to me and I'm going to be like this and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to come back too, but – Everybody like a comedian like, or yeah. some shit. Sometimes I, I do both. Sometimes yeah. I have a line hit me like randomly and I'll mm. save it because I'm like, man, that'd be good mm. or something. Voice, voice but for the right most quick. part, I just, I kind of write once I'm in the suit because I got to get a feel of the beat and everything. But I got a bunch of just like bars and gems that I'll randomly come across okay, as I'm going. Okay, talk your shit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I got a bunch I knew of that. It. That's a what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I asked. I got a bunch of that for you niggas. Yeah. Both y'all niggas. Yeah, but back to this. What's the, uh, what's been like the biggest breakthrough moment uh, in your career? Like as far as you know, like the relationship with your fans, or you know, um, just exposure in general. There's been so many. Um, I feel like selling the stock was a big moment because it allowed mm. fans to finally God be able damn. to make money off yeah. you know, their favorite song. Then the gold card was dope because it's like you get to go to your favorite artist shows. As many times you want forever. Um, the backyard was a huge moment. Um, wallow, that first wallow post that kind of started that wildfire movement. We've had just so many Breakfast Club, Leakers, mm-hmm. Sway. That was a big moment because that's the home team. It's just been compounding. That's fire. Yeah. That's yeah. fire as fuck. We saw the, um, what was that, the um, Breakfast Club freestyle. Yeah. yeah, before we came in here, yeah, yeah. On, you man. went off, yeah, yeah. You, you went off. We get busy. No, you thought it through. Yeah, you <laughs> said you we thought it busy. through. Good yeah, talk. picked no, a good no, beat no, too. I liked it. Yeah, it was just, it wasn't. It's like you said, it was effortless. It was like, this is what's going on. This is what we do. This is what we do. Yeah, no, nah, he and, <laughs> and he got music for days too. How many total albums do you have? I'm on like 25 or 26 right That's now. Damn, we got 10 just ready to kind of go for this year. So. What? Man, you got 10 ready to go. Yeah, it's going to be another big year. I think we dropped like seven last year. Well, since you or six since you ago. make so much music, how do you decide what to put out and when? Um, If I love it, I put it out. Um, When is really depending on the space I'm in. Sometimes we'll make something and we're like, well, let's just drop this shit tomorrow. And it's out. And sometimes we're like, nah, I want to do a music video and some content. So we'll start. Yeah, so it's no like but strategic. But if I love it, it all comes out regardless. Um. I don't really determine if this is a success or not. I you just share care. it, right? Like the music for me is just my journal. You don't really look to have a successful journal. It's just like put that shit out there. People fuck with it. They fuck with it. Um, I use life as like a moniker to determine if I'm succeeding or not. But for the music, like it's just yeah. my thoughts. Some of them going to hit with certain people and some won't resonate. And I'm okay with that. Gotcha. Damn, that's crazy. He made me want to really try that shit out. I want to. I was just for to say, do you you feel like that too? I I just at this point, um, with the music, I get I wanted to give it a real chance. So it's like I wanted to put money behind it, make sure it's in the right hands and it's actually available for everybody in the right way, right? See, it's sometimes that could be a hindrance because mm-hmm. if you don't put it out at all, you're not giving it no chance. But if you put it out today you start to give it a chance and you could always come back. Like I got songs that dropped years ago that's having viral moments right now. GT Cool came out in 2021. It's it's trending on Instagram right now. You feel me? Cause I went back, did live sessions, we did music videos. You can always circle back, but if you don't put it out there to start, 
Yeah. It's like you ain't giving them nothing. You feel me? But uh, yeah, you can put it out and and still give it its life later. It might not hit until two, three years later when right. you get it right. But don't wait. That's mm-hmm. what I've learned with this. Like I'm here today because I dropped 25 albums. I wouldn't be here if I didn't. And I put content relentlessly. Like do that little dance came out 2020, maybe 2019, 2019 or 2020. That's one of my, I go do that at a show, everybody sing a word for word. Every day, it still gets its climb, you feel right. me? Right. So, it's like, um, man, put that shit out. <laughs> I feel you it. You feel me? Put that shit out. No, I put got, it out I got plenty shit. Yeah, I got plenty shit to put out. It's just, I I be like, damn, bro, I want to get a video done. I don't want it to come out without this. I be like, bro, I just spent this much time working on this shit. I don't want to just put it out, and then I got to film this movie. I ain't got nothing to back it. Like I'd be like, nigga, I'll be, but I'll be mad as hell if an artist is just like, nigga, here, here go y'all songs. I just said I'm not gonna get in the game until I get the right shoes, or until I get a wristband, or until I get the right jersey. Nigga, I'm not getting in the game if I ain't got the right (laughs) shoes. The fuck, that's the thing. See, but that's a they. My coach ain't gonna let me play without the right shoes. That's a new thing for you. When you was a young nigga, boy, I get in this game with flip flops on. I'm trying to hoop. What are you talking about? You feel me? Like, you you going to go get on that court. Like you said, yeah. when you get a ball, you can't even stop. It don't nah, really matter sure. what's happening. And that's the thing as we, like, grow and progress, especially within nah, this just, industry. You just beat me with the analogy. Right? With this I industry, it'll, 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 it. it'll eat our hunger where we forget where we start, where it's like, bro, yeah, go hoop. Yeah. Like, you straight feel up. me? You want to hoop, right? You, nah, you got to go hoop. You feel me? And, and bro, it's just I try to, I try to keep that. Like, I, I know. You feel me? I like that, bro. Real talk. You and you and currency both now. Nah, nah he get it from his me. pops, man. Both of them got me, but his, oh, your pop got twenty six albums. No. I'm okay then. Like, so what the you mentality? Mean? I'm talking about the mentality. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, like he's selling bootlegs, man. Like oh, this shit sure. could be over any day. Oh yeah, like, we two of the same. Any day that could be. We two over. of the same. Man, I, I, I he's sold still doing shit. Too. Well, actually, yeah, I didn't and, bootleg and that's movies. Thing, that's like, crazy. Man, bootlegs was one branch off of his tree. My pop sold uh, everything, everything except drugs, and he was successful at all of it. Like he was probably the first wholesale store. He was the only place you can come to on the block and get CDs, get a scooter, get a bike, get clippers, mm, get a so barber was, chair. Like you know what I mean? It was, it was real. Just like wholesale. So he was Master P. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's he got crazy. the hookup. Yeah. yeah. Oh, bro. Oh, <laughs> so He's giving up phones and that's all that. He's selling man. phones, that's chirps, all that. The pages, the everything. That's great. So you was one of them mm-hmm. kids that was just on all the technology. Like you had the mm-hmm. everything. Uh, the electric scooter. Yeah, yeah, we had hell. Yeah, when we was coming toys, up early, everything. yeah, you would try everything out. Like, no, it's dope. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he had y'all doing that. Like here, like a sales test it out before he. Nah, we wasn't the testers, but you know oh, okay. we'd get the things that we wanted. Yeah, <laughs> oh, they got, they yeah. get to see it, they yeah. exposed yeah. to it to know it's yeah. a new toy, right? It's a new Twinkie coming out. <laughs> it's a damn motherfucker. <laughs> 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 oh right. no, yeah, they right. know all of it. Hey, family is a, a theme on this show. Yeah, uh, talk about the role your family played in success. Man, tremendous. My mom, till this day, drops off packages to the post office, drops off packages to people's house. My first show ever, me and my pops went 50-50 on together. Uh, early merch equipment, my pops had helped me buy runs. Um, my daughter's mom helped me build my whole company from the ground up. So they really invested in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, my family has played a heavy, all of my early shows, like when we was only doing 30, 20, 10, a lot of that was family and the close homies, you know, pulling up, so. Uh, a pivotal part. I wouldn't be here without it. Damn. What's that like? Like balancing that out because that's a lot of pressure. Like that's a lot of help and assistance, but at the same time, it's almost like you can't fuck up because you got so right. Many it's hands a lot in riding on you, but it's also um, I don't have to do it. I get to do it. Mm. Right, and that changes everything. I get to wake up that was one and of the go bars take care of my talking. family. Mm-hmm. I don't have to. You feel me? Right. And that 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 shit really uh helps because yeah it do be a lot of pressure some days when you're carrying everything but it's like i carry it because i'm strong enough to carry it uh, mm. that was the bar he was talking about he stabbed me in the heart because i be getting upset like i go off on people like you know when shit is be like yeah like especially if my girl is involved and my mom and dad are involved and they got this like let somebody slip up yeah 
Ready to blow. I'm be, I, yeah, I'm gonna be going crazy, or I'm gonna be, I'm gonna get so mad to the point where you're not gonna want to come back and work for me tomorrow. Oh, copy. You know copy, what I'm copy, saying? Copy, like, copy, yeah. clearly he got a way about people where he could, you know, manage all of that. That's what I said. I would. That's be commendable, mad at bro. The man. You know, the man be, so, talking so calm. I'm like, bro. I and this be is mad how the, the team man. usually get the messages too. Like, I'm not. Um, Man, I kind of I, I give everybody this grace to an extent, unless it's like you eat really, really fuck. But even then, we've had people really, really fuck up, and I was still like, mm. right, but it took right. a long time. I didn't used to be. <laughs> I right, used right, to have right, the same. Right, I, right. This is through like growth a and, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. it wasn't always this way. Real talk. Okay, I'm a big okay. kid now. Damn. You feel me? Damn. This nigga ain't grown up yet. I'm yeah. no. Huh? Uh, uh, I'm getting there. I'm getting it. Man, you got to keep balance. Yeah. You got to keep that kid and that child. Like, I'm still I'm still a, a kid. Boy, oh, no, for sure. You feel me? You got to have that balance. Just, but it gets difficult at times to, you know, turn it off or to recognize when you're supposed to be what you're supposed to be in that moment. For sure. Like, that's yeah. where I get a yeah. problem. It's like, that's yo, forever. You know, like, I, I still, I'm a grown-up, but I still don't know when it's appropriate for me to act You know, one of my way. boys told me one time, he was like, what helps him navigate is seeing everybody, like, the child them and it's very difficult to deal with people a certain way when you can see them as like just that kid you know even even the niggas who like extra hard and extra it's like bro you was a kid once mm -hmm. and the kid you ain't this you feel me a kid just want to enjoy their life and have fun some things happen along the way that mold right. you, you turned into but this. when you like hearing him get that perspective it really helped me because i deal with people in the same manner like I could damn near talk to anyone. Like even my demographic is so crazy because it's all ranges of the world, yeah. and I'm from, bro. I'm from the block, so I've just had to navigate mm -hmm. my entire life. But it's like I can, I can see everybody for exactly who they are, and and it helps me deal with people a lot better. Like my mom, we've been able to cultivate a completely different relationship because I can see her now. She's not like my mom. I just see her as a human, and right. it's like okay, bro, I get it. You feel okay. me? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. But yeah, when yeah. you give people them roles and they fuck up, because then you like, my girl fucked up, my mom fucked up. But it's like, bro, that's just a human. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, they don't have a role, you feel me? Like, that's, this is just a person who happens to be in this role, so now you feel differently about it. You feel different when your mama do something versus when the homie do something because you putting right, them in that role. Right, but it's right. like, bro, she was here before she was your mama, nigga. Right. <laughs> and right. she was going right. through her right. own right. shit in right. life that had nothing to do with you. You feel me? Boom. So it definitely helped you have a little bit more grace. Right. So, right. so hopping into being a father. Yeah. <laughs> father, life changes, go. Grace. I always wanted to do that. Like Gra <laughs> <laughs> grace, uh, patience. Um, man, I've learned so much about how to communicate through having a child and like mm. just um man it's a beautiful experience like i really learned how much i get to see the impact of me and everything i do in my child mm. like my daughter just recently got um she got asked to be a part of this math competition at school because she's like really great at math and uh prior Shout to this her. like for the past few months like we be on math heavy. Like my daughter is in uh, the fourth grade, but she can do. She can tell you what one eighth of a number is, one tenth, one ninth. Because mm, that's right. the type of math we do. We do percentages, and I I include it in the life aspect. I'll write a question and be like, if I sold thirty tickets at this, and I had to pay this person a fourth of that, what is that? And I got to see the payoff of that work because she's got to. They mm, was like, mm, bro, she's really good at math, solid. you know. So, but I learned it outside of education, just the way I talk. The way I maneuver around her, how the the energy that I'm getting, she's picking up all of Everything. that, and um, man, she's a great human, so it makes me feel good. Like, damn, I'm doing something right if mm -hmm. I was able to create like a. a she's you taking know, the great, the great, the she's best. She's taking parts the best pieces, right? Yeah. That's so fire! I love that kid. And my, it's a my girl. daughters do that. Yeah, my, both my daughters do it. Yeah, they, just, they do something where you're like, I did teach you that, like, right? You know, or it's like with me, it's like, yo, you were watching. Yeah, like, and that's the thing. Most of the time, you didn't teach them; they just learned from picked you. Picked it up, yep. right? Yeah, they right. they see it and they experience. But it's like and you said, learning. your delivery of how you're mm -hmm. talking, how you're doing that. Mm -hmm. It's like now when she hears something, she already in her head is processing that. Mm -hmm. Man, she probably she, can't even turn it she's off. She's such a pure person. It's really dope to that's see. Like fine. she don't understand malice. 
Like I used to do this thing with her. I'll, uh, after we do work, I'll have her write down five questions that she have about life. Just mm-hmm. whatever. I'm like, whatever. Ask whatever. This nigga will always ask something I don't have an answer to. <laughs> and it's like, oh, bro, I, like every time it's it's intricate. Like it's every time like it's what? intricate. Like, um, <laughs> Yeah, what I, I did, deep this rabbit hole, bro. Man, I, I, I'll be saving the papers at home. Let me think of one. Fuck, um, you should have brought one, bro. You <laughs> right. got to carry one right. with you all the time. Like a birth certificate, yeah. shorty. You got to keep one. Um, she had asked me about racism one time uh, because they were doing, like, uh, pre prior to the Black History shit, I think it was, like, MLK Day or mm-hmm. something. Uh, Ten. Ra- they doing racism too? I mean, they have Martin they Luther should. King Day and I they teach him about yeah, Rosa Parks should. and shit. And uh, she had asked me why. And that's a very, that's like, deep. that's a question. But I'm I'm very open with her and transparent on, I don't have the answer. Sometimes we Google shit together because I tell her, I have no idea. Yo, we let's finna, find out. We finna Shout out find to that. Out, I do you know? with my son. Yeah. yeah. I'll be like, you know what? Yeah, like, we're going to look it up. Or I'll tell him, like, you know what? Look right, it up. Because that like, teaches I don't know them, either. like, that's weird to lie and act like you know and you don't. Right. That's very strange. <laughs> right? But Especially for a kid. long time, like, we, we grew up in systems where you couldn't, like, a nigga didn't want to tell you they didn't have the answer. Had to, they'd talk. rather punish you instead of being like, nigga, I don't know what you <laughs> or there's, Or there's help. points where they don't even know where to get the answer. Like, before Google right? and, and shit, And that could like, be frustrating for mm-hmm. as a parent. Like, I learned, you know, talking to my mom and shit. It's like, right, you get frustrated as a parent when you can't with, with certain shit. So it's just like, we've been able to, uh, man, I've just been able to cultivate a, a different experience than I had growing up with her. So it's really dope to just see it manifest. How do your parents? Uh, like as far as them watching like are they like you should do this you should do that or are they like really hands off to just be like I like how he raised his kid man in terms of raising my daughter they very hands off it's just like you know very hand because they, they see how new it is like they yeah. come in and we at the kitchen table doing work we playing chess we these are things that it wasn't happening you know mm. in my experience so they're very hands off and they and they learn like I talked to my mom we uh we talk about a lot of shit, like, because when I was growing up, we always roasted and made jokes about, like, as a kid, like, I was always a chubby kid growing up, so I got called all types of shit and just to the extreme level, and I had to, like, tell my mom, like, chill, don't do this with her, because, right, like, she don't understand why you're talking about her in that way. It doesn't, it's not fun, you feel me? Yeah. And it wasn't fun to me as a kid, but you got to grow and accept it, so just, like, man, they learning, and they're softer. It's so dope to see them so soft with mm. the kids. Like, they get away... Them kids could do anything with them. Oh, <laughs> you know how that goes. Oh, yeah, for sure. it, it's really beautiful, but it's dope. They learning and they growing. Yeah. That's it's dope crazy. as you look at it that way too. It's crazy. That's yeah. what I was gonna tell them. Like, you wait till you watch this shit back and you see how cheesy you just got as soon as you start <laughs> talking about family. That nigga was like, Yeah, yeah man, they're my hey. dogs. Yeah, that's no, how, no, no, that's, that's how, how it's supposed to be. But that's yeah. motherfuckers that really be with their daughter. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I've yeah. also talked to them. Like, oh, yeah, they cool. Like, <laughs> sure, it's cool. Like, it's, uh, it's them <laughs> too. Nigga, like, nah, I'm saying, like, yeah, we, we play chess. Yeah, he like, we play hey, chess. We doing this, but it's just good to see when people. People are happy about it. Like we just encourage. yeah, it's a and I didn't always have that energy. Like I had a child at seventeen, and it was like really traumatic for me. Like mm. I didn't want to embrace it or accept it. It took me a long time to be like happy about the fact that I was a father and had a kid. Like for so long, I had so much resentment and just nasty emotion and energy because I felt like it was it was stopping or impeding my life or I had something to tend to. But uh, now it's definitely something to embrace. So like. Now it's a smile, you feel Real me? Talk. It's like, but it, it was a journey to even be to that. But that's <laughs> what I'm saying. That's what's beautiful about it. Yeah. That makes it even doper, what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, that you are lighting up like that. If you wasn't before, nigga, you got it. Like, that's <laughs> the, like, I've always felt like my best days started once my do- my first daughter was born. Yeah. Like. I, you really start walking with a purpose. You really start asking yourself real shit. Like, you'll really look in the mirror for real now. Like, you ain't looking right. in the mirror and just seeing the version of yourself mm. you feel like seeing. Like, you really right. take a step back and be like, yo, that was some bullshit. Like, I should have got this done. I didn't get it done. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, you hold yourself accountable. Man, and kids hold you accountable. We was walking from school the other day. My daughter, my daughter hit me with the. Uh, she said, uh, "Don't forget," and I said, "Forget what?" She said, "You owe me a hundred dollars," and I said, "From what?" She said, "Remember, I beat you in chess. You never paid me." <laughs> said, y'all bet a hundred dollars? Yeah, I bet. A, I didn't Boy, think she would win, so I, mean, I was I was just talking house. reckless. You know, I'd be talking a little he extra told, sometimes. Uh, no, no, no. He told a ten-year-old girl. 
He was gonna give her a hundred dollars and thought she was. And she spun forget? the block on me. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. She you thought she was yeah, gonna she forget? Definitely come oh. to collect, sir. Yeah. 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 And she good at math. Like, oh, old, no. boy, you fucking yeah. with a load shot. Like, the block <laughs> on she was like, pay up, <laughs> right? Baby. Like, yeah, you that's... don't act like I ain't forget. You better call Dick Tracy, dude. <laughs> yeah. But fuck? before we let you out of here, man, we like to ask all of our guests who come on the show, what are you working on improving right now in your personal life? Everything. Yeah. Everything. Um. Yeah, man, we was just having a convo yesterday in a and b and I'm like, man, I got to get healthy because I like I've been able to I've been able to gain all this success and do all you see me redoing the backyard selling to all this shit. And I've really been at like 60 percent. Like I haven't even been healthy. I've been just emotionally going through it, bullshitting here, like haven't even really fully focused in and like high a lot so it's like man everything like i haven't even got to see myself at optimal function yet you know so uh i'm, I'm just everything Ooh, so you're gonna turn into megatron next year that's man yeah, it's that's first. possibly yeah gonna, that's what's gonna happen he said that's happened see, yeah he said i haven't seen my optimal self man I haven't yeah. been here for a long time you feel me like i and i do hour and a half long sets and shit you know sometimes two hours and it's like i'm not even i'm not even at Right, the level 100%. that I need to be where I feel Oh, so you mean great. like as an artist too? Like you, everything. You're saying be like being in shape perform. so you're That's not what I'm out saying. of so breath. You perform, everything. Shit. Yeah. Being completely sober, drinking enough water so your mouth ain't never dry. Yeah. You're fucking, you know what I'm saying? You just be on point. Your mind is different when you assert Your mind's yeah. just different, right? Real tough. And it's like I haven't even got to that level and I've been able to accomplish a lot. So I just want to. I want to see what it's like. <laughs> oh, your diet you being a me? certain yeah. way. Yeah, everything you eat is you. nourishing to you. Real you feel time. me? Like that's a, a different level. I ain't gonna so. lie, I might not never see that because. And I may not either, right? <laughs> I was I just gonna say either. that may, comes like, at the price of what you actually do yeah, too. Exactly, and I'm I may not done. either, but it's never like a bad thing to strive for scoring mm-hmm. 100 points. For you sure. may never get 100, but you might get 75 and. That's a win. You feel me? <laughs> That's still a win. If you drop 70 in a game, you Real won, talk, nigga. You somebody. You yeah. somebody. You feel me? So but I, we I don't even never have footage that Will did wow. that. That Will did what? I don't think the nigga did. You know, I think it's and one of those things where, ain't. you know, when you're in a barbershop and the story start one way, and then by the time you get to the 10th person, a nigga like, man, that nigga Tell dropped a 100 on him. Will. And it's like, did oh, he? <laughs> yeah, Will. Oh, Wilt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, was saying Will, I wouldn't go against Will that. Like, but I wouldn't go against that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's possible, especially I'm seeing who. I'm just saying, I'm just, why, I'm just saying honey. for. Um, I but they, to had, see the they, honey they didn't record Phil. Shit, nah, they picture, did though. You take a picture. Nah, but it wasn't like they couldn't, couldn't record take the whole a series game. of pictures so I could see it in slow motion. Oh no, there's clips from the game, but that's is it. I think so. Or is that clips of any game? I don't know. Could be. That's what I'm saying. It's so old, though. That's my thing. Why right. would they do Who were they playing that day? But see, that's the thing. <laughs> exactly. I know how I old know. niggas is. Like, I got a true. pops and some uncles who were like, true. man, back then when we were in this life. That's true. I don't know if that's just. I'm just saying at that height, but like, we don't homie even know was, who they was playing that. But day. homie was LeBron back in, like, the 50s. It's yeah, not really, it's very it's not really he like. And, and who he was this. playing but, against. Nah, like, it's, it's a possibility. Remember he was in the Olympics and shit. He was doing, like, high jumping and all types of shit. Will Chamberlain did everything. Look, Will Chamberlain was seven feet, bro. Shout yeah, out Will, but he man. did shit that other seven feet don't do. It was not televised. No footage of the game has since been recovered. Recovered. The, Somebody recorded it, but it ain't been No recovered. footage of the game has since been recovered. Recovered. Right? Yeah, so, so really, Kobe, Kobe is Kobe, really Kobe got the record. Oh, God. Like if we you only saying that because he's from Cali. Nah, like just real talk. Kobe has the record. Eighty one. Like that we got to that witness we and experience. We that we oh, know. Oh, okay. Like okay. Kobe, it's yeah, a fact, yeah, right? It's, it's not a belief. Fact. It's a fact. Versus Wilts, for most of us, that's, that's a not take, He could be holding a newspaper article on, that I'm they not edited. Gonna sit, I'm not going to sit here while we take down Wilts' record. I'm not I'm taking it saying. down. I'm no, not, no, oh, it's taking it down. I've seen him drop 60, though. Both of y'all took it down. But we've seen him drop 60. I've seen Dame drop 71 a couple nights ago. It's fine. It's but real. I'm not. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not playing devil's advocate here. <laughs> I love Will, man. Should have said that. He said, I, I love, love Will, man. Right. He didn't even like that. Clean it up. Clean it up. Clean it up. No, no. I mean, it wasn't dirty. We yeah, just saying we ain't seen the proof. Where's this? Okay. this yeah. We just saying we ain't seen the proof. We're in a proof-driven <laughs> world right now. <laughs> right. You see what I'm saying? Like, I could lie it's to you with proof. It's just too old. I could lie to you with proof. But it's just too old to prove. Is that nigga still alive? Nah. 
Oh, okay. You died. It might be too old. See, for now you went. That's now the part. It's always all that down. one guy. Right. Yeah, he just tore it all down. Yeah. Love will. <laughs> man, he like, is he even still alive? Yeah. All oh. right, man. Before we let you go, <laughs> give me something you want to promote. What's next? Like, uh, let's go. Yeah. What else? Get your shit. Man, on. just a whole lot of life. We bringing the backyard show back. We okay. uh, we in the backyard the first Sunday of every month. Okay. You come can come to the church. Please come to church. April to August, man. Come to church. Come to church. Yeah, it's oh, the first church. Sunday of every month, man. You get that. You get the good the word and the sermon the co- in the backyard, man. Oh, we got a the pergola who the, who is the, back. Who the, who the, who the pastor? Yeah, who's the pastor? Me. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just Live. come. You when you up? come and you and you get it, you're gonna be like, I get it. Okay. Right. It's gonna be the best feeling. You're gonna eat good. You're gonna. You're just gonna have a good time, man. So from April to August, the first Sunday of each month, we in the backyard. That's all I got. That's crazy. You know? We can pull, we up, gonna pull up there, man. We, we got, got shit to, to do. Yeah. We, we don't, don't go to church to really anyway, so. Me yeah. neither, which is perfect. Perfect. This is That's like a new perfect. way of getting church, man. People be crying and just getting like, you get, you get everything So you just you like need, doing man. the testimony. You ain't even reading the book. We just ra- we just sharing our stories, man. It ain't even rap at this point. I'm just up there talking and we sharing the journey That's and we bonding. Yeah, yeah just. Yeah, come through. Come to church. Bring your ass to church, man. We're going to have to come over. <laughs> yeah, we have to vibe, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We got to check that menu out, man. Yeah. Just so y'all know, I don't do any of the vegan shit that they into out here in Cali. I don't know what's with y'all. Veganism. Nah, it's all good. You don't have to. I'm cool on the veganism, but I'll be a part of everything. Else. Which is crazy. Veganism it's at the, the barbecue. It's the, bro, it really be the For title. For sure, they got that, vegan that, barbecue. That be, 100%. They do got vegan barbecue. 100%. No, no, no. I'm not saying Cali they don't. I'm saying we don't. No, no, no. I'm saying no, Pops is from the yeah. South, man. He cooking. He, yeah, that, he yeah. Shout out to Pops. He man. would never come down, out here and push no vegan Pops, barbecue. Pops, hold me down. I need some rib tips. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He like, going to get you right. Real rib tips. Real talk. I need the 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 barbecue beans. Like, come on. Yeah, he going to get you right. You ain't even got to worry about it. I need all that. Like, Make it you would be like enough food, or you cookout. gotta get there at a certain. I'm gonna time. wear denim. Probably. You would want to get there on time because I start my shows on. I start my shows on time. Are we you don't do time? the like. Like I start on time. Whatever that's time right. you see. You have an opener. Not usually. It's usually just me. Oh, that's dope. And I'll, sometimes I'll bring out like people throughout my set, bring out the homies that's or like fire. somebody from the city. But yeah, I just we get straight to it. That's fire as hell, man. Straight, no chasing, no bullshit. Come on. Real talk, yeah, man. man. Bring y'all ass out to the backyard. Yeah. As always, thank y'all for rocking with us on Iman Amongst Men. I uh, am your host, Iman Shumpert. And I'm Ari Shumpert. And I'm La Russell. <laughs> yeah, man. Thank you, our guest, La Russell, man. Give it up. Give One it up. time. Give it up. Yeah. 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 I'm La Russell. Yeah.